Hello, welcome back today to another video. We got some crazy stuff we're going to be talking about today. Now let's jump into it. Okay, today we have... First thing I got for you guys is there was a dump truck incident in Cleveland, Ohio, near a steel mill called Cleveland Cliffs. And right now we're on our way to the scene of a to go. They confirmed uh, fire yesterday and reignited again today. The person who lived inside was taken off. And know. let's get to this. One person died after a yeah, collision yeah. on a Norfolk Southern rail line that runs through the Cleveland Cliffs Cleveland Works property. Cleveland police confirming to us that they're investigating the incident along West 3rd Street and that the call came in as a vehicle stroke. Spokesperson says a Norfolk Southern employee was killed. We have reached out to Norfolk Southern. Okay. So, what we got here is another train, okay, got hit, supposedly, from a dump truck. Supposedly, the guy was um, outside the train on the ladder or something, holding on to the ladder. Um, we've seen trains uh, go by, and then the worker is always, like, you know, standing outside of it, you know, when it's going slow. I've seen that. And uh, I guess this truck uh, collided, and it killed the Norfolk Southern worker. So now there's been an investigation going on about Norfolk Southern safety practices and also, um, you know, regarding this incident, you know. And there was also another incident in Springfield, Ohio, where there was a derailment. And uh, it's just getting crazy. All we're seeing is train derailments, but why? That's what people aren't thinking. Why? Why are we seeing so much? Okay, let's go to our next segment here. Um, what the heck? Okay, here we go. So this right here. The British government has set out plans for a new law barring entry to asylum seekers in small boats. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has said that preventing boat So, here we go. Even in Britain, they're having immigration problems. We've seen it with Biden's economy and his tactics and his policies. Look at immigration, okay? It is just flooding the borders. You got all this cartel stuff happening now. I mean, even Britain, they're like, hey, you know, we're cutting it off. They're sending people to Kawanda or Karanda, whatever the hell it's called. But it's just getting crazy. The immigration problem at the border of the United States, um, there's a video um, that was talking about the cartels and stuff, about how Americans got kidnapped and they got killed down there. But what are they going to do? You know what I'm saying? What are they going to do? It's just mind-blowing. But it's it's pretty interesting to see uh, other countries such as Britain, you know, they're taking uh, they're taking uh, you know immediate action against immigration because it does affect the economy, it affects the way of life for all of us. And uh, let's move on to the next segment. This one I found interesting. You know, we like to bring crazy clips out here. But look at this, this one right here. This, story. Yes. this insect, long thought to be extinct, was spotted outside an Arkansas Walmart. It's a giant. Outside of an Arkansas Walmart. Giant lacewing from the Jurassic area. It's the first sighting in the bug in more than 50 years and also the first. More than 50 years? I mean, this is just crazy. In more than 50 years, people have seen this. More than 50 years. This is just crazy. A giant lace wing? Like, what? What is going on here? Actually, I'll go back to it. Let me see. Participants. What the heck? Yeah, it's literally just crazy. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. But um, this giant lace wing, I mean, look at this. Found in Arkansas, okay? First record of the insect in our but the discovery might indicate the first sighting at a Walmart within 50 years. I mean, that's pretty cool, you know. We like to bring interesting topics here, you know. It just gets a little crazy. But our next segment that we're gonna be going to is we got cartel members 
and Americans, okay? Let's let's just see a little bit of this so you guys can get a little bit of context. It was shot in the leg. They were moved around to multiple locations, including a health clinic, to throw authorities off the trail before eventually being found in a wooden shack. No, no hubo risk. Americans ambushed in Mexico, then found in a wooden shed, dead. And we talk about tourism these days, you know, everybody wants to go here and go there, but these are the dangers that exist. This is real. We've known about it. You know, there's actually warnings, you know, that say, hey, you know, you're going to this country. It might not be the most safest place to go, but people are like, hey, this is awesome. I like the beach and I like this and I like that. And you take the risk. Now, it would be nice to go anywhere without no problems, but. Just as in the grocery store, we go there and we can't even find bananas or blueberries. So we have to go somewhere else. You know, that would be considered a slight inconvenience of a problem. But this is the kind of stuff that's been happening. So this is pretty crazy. Let's see what else I got to say. The man guarding that shack is now behind bars and Mexican authorities say more arrests will be coming. But with the power of cartels growing on both sides of the border, it's not clear if those ultimately responsible for the murders and kidnappings will face justice. They have too much information. I mean, this is just crazy, guys. This is just crazy. This is mind-blowing. But we've known for years that cartels have been infiltrating our borders with a border open this wide and Biden doing nothing about it. This is the stuff that's going to be happening, you know? They're pouring into our borders, you know, dangerous. What did Trump say before, you know? Dangerous criminals. Now, we know about this. We have strong borders, but now you let all these people, you know, migrate in and just let them just go across the water and say, oh, have at it, you know, good luck on your journey. And then you don't know who's a criminal, who's not. And, um, you know, gangs and all kind of stuff, drugs infiltrating our borders and then we just have more overdoses and stuff and it's just it's just terrible it's it's not what we need you know it's not what we need we need stronger borders but we got a joke we got a joke for immigration policies you know and borders our borders are weak you know people are coming all over the country you know they're they're going to take your job your your cousin's job you know and they'll they'll take it they'll take it for less just to have a place to live and so called freedom right so let's go to our next segment See right here. Now, this is interesting, okay? So, let me give you guys a little context about this. Let me see. This is very interesting. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys. Here, let me, I don't know why it keeps messing up. Technical difficulties. So, anyways, the city of Cleveland, Ohio, okay? A little context. They just had a whole bunch of officers they're letting go and doing some disciplinary stuff because of some, you know, um, you know, misconduct. Let's just say that. Okay. Doing some crazy shit that's been caught on camera. The one guy was breaking a phone inside of a car, going crazy on people, tasing people that are already handcuffed. I mean, you know, there's misconduct, every profession, anywhere you go, probably, but it's just crazy, you know, East Cleveland, Ohio. However, what we're going to be showing you guys today is they have had so many run-ins with, you know, the, the little TikTok stuff. And that is people trying to steal Kias, successfully stealing Kias and Hyundais because of terrible, you know, security. You know, like they're just breaking the inside of the ignition, putting in a USB drive that has a certain program on it, and they can start a car. Like, that's crazy. So now the city of Cleveland, Ohio, is actually suing Kia and Hyundai. We don't know how far they will go, but, you know, they said that since January, January to January in a year span, it's over 2,000 cars. Now, think about the manpower somebody who can't be getting saved from, you know, from other stuff, you know, people that actually need an officer, you know, law enforcement to respond, you know, maybe it's an older person, maybe it's criminal, but they got to go hunt down Kias and Hyundais because of the shitty safety features. This is what happens with foreign cars, right? So 
Let's get into this. Is headed to court to battle two major automakers. This morning, Mayor Justin Bibb announced a lawsuit against Kia and Hyundai after hundreds of cars have been stolen over the past year. Our Isabel Lawrence has been following the story from the start and has the latest on that announcement. Yesterday, uh, the city filed a lawsuit in federal court against car manufacturers Kia and Hyundai for their failure to install industry standard anti-theft technology in millions of their vehicles. The city of Cleveland is taking action by taking Kia and Hyundai to court. Taking Kia and Hyundai to court. Now look, we get it. They got a strong argument. They're putting all the resources in to hunt down these cars, and it just keeps happening, right? So they're fed up with it. You know, they're probably already down as it is. You know, they don't got a lot of manpower. They're probably short-staffed, right? And um, it's just it's just literally crazy. I mean, I think I think they do need to send these auto manufacturers. You know, they need to send them a message. And also a little update. They're also right now the number the other two that they're targeting is the new Dodge Ram. They're targeting uh, the newer year Rams. There's some kind of security flaw on that, and also a uh, Toyota Highlander. So if you got those vehicles, watch out. People are watching TikTok and they're going crazy. You know, they're spreading all these terrible things on TikTok, right? But when you spread a good message, hey, everybody wants to cancel you, right? But yeah, so we'll move to our next segment. I thought that was pretty interesting. It might be the first state. I'm not sure. And if so, what will happen? I uh, might have to do an update on this. And uh, we'll bring you guys, you know, as many cool stories as we could find, you know. just Sometimes it's just it just gets a little crazy. So now there was another train derailment in Oklahoma. Let's get into this. This is just crazy. Look at that. The heck? Look, they try to see this right here. What the heck? It looks like they're trying to cover shit up, blur shit out. Unless maybe they had to. This one, though, I'm not sure if this is Norfolk Southern at all. I'm not sure. So there's another train derailment in Oklahoma. Okay. Look at this. I mean, this is preposterous. Like, what is going on here? Why is there so many derailments? And look where they're happening. They're happening all over the country, right? Um, okay, let's go to the next one. This might have, I'm not sure if this is CSX or not. But I think there was another train derailment in West Virginia. And this one was CSX because I did check the road. Begins right now. Jump into this. And let's take a look at what we see there. There you see what you're looking at is the locomotive from the train actually in the river. And uh, I believe, Brittany, we were told this was caused by a rock slide that hit the tracks. Right. <clears throat> what we a rock slide that hit the tracks. And also, let me give you a little bit of context. There was diesel fuel, among other things, probably, in these rail cars, but they're saying that it's only diesel fuel that is leaking into the river in West Virginia. Okay? Now, where? Let me see. It's not saying, but... We can tell you at this point, crews say there were 109 train cars in total with one fuel tank and locomotive, as we've shown you, in the new... All were empty. Were they really all empty? Or is it just a cover-up? Because CSX, why would CSX want to be put in the same predicament as Norfolk Southern? But maybe they were. But even if they were, we got one fuel tank of diesel, right? And they said that it's okay because it's on fire. But we know that there's still being contamination into the water. Who knows where this water goes into municipalities, Let's river see. or people's Our wells. team coverage starts with 10 News reporter Connor Rural Dietrich. Areas. He is live in Sandstone tonight. Around a corner to find a big boulder Sandstone, on the track. 22 of the train cars derailed, but thankfully all of them were empty. However, a locomotive and fuel tank did fall into the river. We're told diesel fuel is pouring into the river. Diesel fuel is pouring into the river. So we have East Palestine who just got everything contaminated, right? With vinyl chloride and other substances not everyone's talking about. 
And then we get the West Virginia derailment. We got an Oklahoma. We got a Springfield, Ohio one. Might have to uh, pull that one up. But this is crazy. Yeah, John. Well, right now what we're told is that. We don't, we All don't right. Care. Thank you, Condor. And there again, you're still. Okay. Investigation, but see. Danville. Now take a look at this, this these photos. The fiery site is from the diesel fuel from the train's engine. Nothing that the train was carrying. We are told two cars fell into the new river, one of which was a fuel tank causing diesel fuel to spill into the new CSX right there. That's what I wanted to show you guys. So now we have CSX, Norfolk Southern, CSX possibly getting getting investigated for their safety as well. And their policies? I wonder, will this happen? Do we know? We don't know, but I do know that Norfolk Southern is having um, some kind of investigation. They're testifying at a hearing. They're asking them some decent questions. I don't know. The CEO's sitting there with a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of lawyers in the background behind him and stuff. Probably so he doesn't mess up. Um, let's jump into another thing. True, these farmers really do want a wife. Here we are at the farm. A new dating show? Farmers looking for love? What the hell? What is going on? This is just... Farmers in Times Square for a farmer. Oh, farmers finding love. On the show, two... Come on, Very man. different worlds come together. Some would say... Oh, this is like farmers only. <laughs> farmers only comes to TV. That's crazy, man. It's just like I try to bring like a wide variety of different topics, right? And it's just stuff that I find interesting. I'm like, what the hell? Farmers looking for love. It just popped up. Like, what the heck? Had a taste of New York City, literally, with iconic pretzels. It's iconic nice. pretzels. You know those pretzels will give you diabetes. They got so much salt in them damn things, you know? The guy who was making the pretzels was scratching his ass and hitting the vape pen and then gave you your pretzel. You want some cheese with that? And everybody crazy. was so happy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, if you guys like watching that shit, watch it. Who knows? And then we got Tucker Carlson, you know, he's gone viral lately. People are talking about him, you know, what is going on with Tucker, right? We know how the mainstream media is, right? We can't believe everything. People who know, know. QAnon is not all bad. Everybody has their own opinion. And especially about these riots. You know, QAnon is not a bad, it's not a bad thing, my opinion. But people want to judge stuff without reading into it, you know. Obviously, we don't agree with everything, you know. People don't agree with everything. You're not ever going to come agreeing with everyone. The but depiction of Jacob. Look at this crazy January 6th video. I'm going to show you guys. The Capitol Police are walking with the, they call him the shaman, right? Chansley, that January you've seen 6th. in the media for more than two years. He's a terrorist, they said. He should be killed. Shoot him. Yeah. Shoot him. Like, if it, you burst into the United States, hey, if he was dressed like bin Laden, would you have shot him? Shoot him. Watch. Shoot him. It makes you wonder, who are the violent extremists here? So as you saw, and again, details matter because... So look at this. They're just walking him around. It doesn't look like uh, they're trying to arrest him if he's breaking stuff and breaking down the, the door, right? It looks like they're probably let him in. But the radical left, they'll say something else. This is a man. This is an American this. citizen, a Navy veteran. This is a human being. And so they gave him 41 months. What he actually did should be of deep concern to every American because he's in jail tonight. What Jacob Chansley actually did was wander peacefully through the Capitol, shepherded by Capitol right police here. officers who literally opened doors for him. It looks like they literally gave him a tour. Just as I said, Tucker said. One was locked, they went to Tucker another. Was. Dozens of officers stood and watched him. All of them had guns. Jacob Chansley did not. They never took Look. Okay, look. Look. 
Capitol Police, they have guns, right? The cops, they have handcuffs, okay? If they were that much of a threat, they would have arrested this guy. They gave him a tour, and for whatever reasons, you know, he gets hemmed up, right? You know, because guess what? We all can't be you know, doing this, doing that. But there is conspiracy going on around the police being involved with this, the Capitol Police in specific. Are they involved with it? They probably are. Now, it's not about, you know, speculation and conspiracies because they want to make it, the radical left wants to make it, all these bunch of Trump supporters just ran up in the Capitol, busted everything down, started killing people. Like, no, that's really not what happened. But the mainstream media, they pushed the narrative, you know, 